Hey guys, it's Lizzie. So this video is what to do if you have depression while in college and honestly, it will probably apply to any type of mental illness. So I was thinking of different ways to do this video and I could just tell stories of the times I started crying in the middle of class. Other times I could not think or coherently communicate when we're having a discussion. How sometimes I would walk into the cafe and look around at all the food options and it would stress me out so much having to make a decision of what to eat that I would just not eat that day. I would feel so fatigued and exhausted. It's like having mono to where I just could not get out of bed and make it to class. And I think that the hypersomnia or feeling like you need to sleep for 15 hours a day was the absolute worst because I would set so many alarms and not be able to wake up to go to my morning classes. Also, before I forget, I made a whole video like 20 tips or 13 tips for living in depression, how to kind of get out of depression, things to do besides taking medicine. So definitely go watch that, just tons of life hacks. Also, I have an entire playlist on advice for bipolar disorder and depression. I'm going to link it right up here and in the description. There's specific videos on every single part of mental illness. So the first thing I want to say is that everyone at your university, your professors, administrators, your friends, your roommates, everyone wants you to succeed. The whole college system is set up with tons of resources to help you graduate. And so just know that because I think a lot of times in depression, the way you interpret other people, you interpret it as them not understanding you or attacking you. I think people just don't know how to talk about mental illness, but big picture, everyone wants you to succeed. So just remember that and I think that will help you reach out for help. being at a university could possibly be the best place to have a mental illness because there are so many free services there that make it so much easier to get through it, to improve it. The first free service is the counseling center. You can go to therapy for free. You don't have to have health insurance. Talk therapy is just extremely helpful if you have a mental illness to get diagnosed. Your therapist will probably tell you some of the tips that I discuss in this video, but personalize it to you, help you figure out how to get around it, how to be able to be productive despite having it. I went to a therapist partway through my junior year when I just stopped eating and was feeling fatigued a lot. I didn't know what was going on, but I went to a therapist. They diagnosed me with major depression. And then a couple sessions in, I just kept getting worse and deteriorating mentally. So the therapist told me to go see the psychiatrist on staff. Again, you do not have to have health insurance. The psychiatrist is majorly reduced price. At my university, I only had to pay $50 out of pocket, didn't even have to show insurance. Currently in the United States, mental health treatment is the same price as every other treatment. So even if you go to a place off campus, your copay, so the amount that you personally will be paying, is only going to be around $15. Even psychiatrists are super reasonable. You're only going to be paying like $15, $20 for each appointment. And if your mental health is deteriorating, that destroys every other part of your life, affects every other part of your life, will make it impossible to study and to graduate and so you need to prioritize getting professional treatment. I got prescribed my first ever psychiatric medication from the school psychiatrist. The medicine took forever to kick in. It took like two months to get on the right medicine, but eventually it did kick in. I think I ended up failing all of my classes from that semester. No, 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 no. I think I got a D in math because one of my best friends tutored me and I think I passed my dance class that semester, but I failed my other classes just because I didn't go to treatment fast enough. Immediately do research, go see a therapist and get on medicine as soon as possible if you're showing signs of clinical depression because the only way out of a major depression episode is if you go on medicine. It'll last for like nine months and after the nine months it'll end. So either go on medicine or you'll be in this condition for almost a year. So that is my spiel about getting professional treatment. So something else that I did not even know about, and my dad is a professor, so this is, I feel like no one knows about this. They never talked about this during our orientation. 
I had no idea, but there's something called disability services at your university. And the counseling center can directly connect you to disability services, give you the right paperwork, tell them, yes, she's been, she or he has been officially diagnosed with this mental illness. Then the disability services will have you on file. I think you'll do a short interview or something. Mental illness is considered a disability under US law. So the university is legally required to help you out if you have a disability, meaning giving you extension times for taking a test or returning in an assignment which I think is totally fair because if your mind is literally slowed down in depression if you need 30 more minutes to take a test a couple more days to finish an assignment so you can get credit on it that stuff's really important so one thing I really didn't like was having to talk in office hours one-on-one -on -one with my professors about what was going on it was super vulnerable terrifying having to do that I just refused to talk to my professors so then I failed another semester of classes because I just didn't want to talk to my professors but looking back if I had just gone to disability services and talked to one person there they could have figured out everything with the rest of my classes and I would not have individually had to talk to any professors about it. Another tip I have related to disability services is get your friends involved. Tell your friends what is going on and have them help you with everything because I know when you're in severe depression, having to do logistics and paperwork and meetings and phone calls is impossible. It's so difficult and stressful and so get your parents or one of your best friends involved and be like, hey, I really need help with my depression. I really want to graduate. Can you just help me do paperwork? Help me figure out how to do disability services, how to make a therapist appointment. Just have your friends help you with that. And I think they're gonna be so excited to help you because it's so awful seeing one of your friends suffering with depression because you can't do anything about it because it's just their brain. So giving tangible ways for your friends to help you, they'll actually really, really appreciate that. And one example is I had to talk to my major advisor at one point. I knew I was going to just cry the whole time. And so I texted some of my best friends and one of my best friends, Rose, who happened to be free during that hour, she came with me into the office and she sat next to me and she held my hand while I talked and I ended up crying and it was just so much less awkward and so much less scary because she was there. And then I remember one of my other best friends actually talked to one of my professors when I just missed a presentation and was like, yeah, like Liz is really struggling right now. So like I said at the very beginning, your friends want you to succeed, your professors want you to succeed, the administrators, the counseling center, disability services, everyone wants you to succeed, but it's really difficult wading through all the logistics and so get your friends involved to help. Something else just to help you graduate is to talk to administration. So there's like a dean of the counseling center or someone in charge of the counseling center. So then they are connected with someone who's in charge of some sort of like student services dean position. And my very last semester, I was not going to graduate. And so I finally was trying to figure everything out after not being able to figure out the administration logistics for like two semesters. And they ended up counting this I don't know, kind of like poli-sci class I took that had a ton of philosophy in the class. They ended up counting it as a philosophy class, even though technically it wasn't in the philosophy department. And so they ended up transferring that class credit two weeks before I graduated. And the units from that class are the reason I was able to graduate. And the reason they were able to help me out is because I'd been going to the counseling center and had an official diagnosis. So you have to have an official diagnosis for anyone to help you out. And I know I'm probably not emulating that much empathy right now because I'm just like sharing logistics. This isn't an empathy video. Video, a lot of my other mental illness videos are but it was so painful for me going to therapy I refused to go to therapy my senior year until like I absolutely had to because I was failing classes there was like a dam holding in my emotions and if I went to therapy and started talking about it I would just cry and cry and cry and not be able to stop crying I thought it would make it so much worse but looking back no go to therapy talk about your emotions you have to get it out what happens with me is all these emotions built up and I was literally like frozen and not able to be myself at all for like half a year. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna have to process those emotions eventually. So just start crying, start processing, go to therapy as much as possible. I promise regardless of your personality type, it helps you need it something else that the counseling center is able to do they work with administration after talking to you and so one semester i got extensions in all of my classes um and i didn't even know this like i failed classes and i could have gotten credit for all these classes i i'd done all the work but just like didn't do the final paper didn't finish the final papers and so you can actually get extensions up to like a semester after 
So they will give you like months after to finish work for the class if you can prove that you have a mental illness, that you have a disability. Something else is once you've already been diagnosed with your mental illness, email your professors at the beginning of the semester and tell them, hey, I have bipolar, I have depression, I have generalized anxiety disorder, I've been diagnosed for this amount of time. Just give them a heads up and then if you tell them ahead of time before you have a problem finishing an assignment in time, then they're going to be more understanding and especially if you're going to the university counseling center, they're just going to be able to help you so much more if they know ahead of time what's happening. Something that I did is I actually asked for the syllabus a couple weeks before the semester started so I could get a head on reading because my brain is so slowed down in depression. I just wanted to get like ahead of time to be able to like get the coursework done. So some other tips, do not take morning classes. Just try to get them off of your schedule. In depression, you just cannot wake up in the morning. I know I can't, you probably can't. So just try to not make that possible. But through disability services, it is possible to be taking a morning class and to never have to go or to not lose attendance if you don't go if you can prove you have a mental illness. So literally they help you out so much. Something else that I recommend is drop a double major, drop a double minor, drop a minor if you don't need it. Just be honest with yourself ahead of time of what you're gonna be able to do. I kept thinking, oh, like the depression's gonna end, it's gonna get better, and for me, it took about three months, it takes three months on average for me to get balanced on medicine. Antidepressants take about six weeks to kick in and once the medicine has been in your system for six weeks it might not even work and you might have to try out another medicine. So if you know you're in severe depression and starting off a semester just be aware that that whole semester you might be in depression. So just think it through and if you're able to drop a major, take easier classes, take less units, maybe if you really want to take a class like audit it instead. <laughs> Another option is to take a whole semester off because this is just, it's so difficult to treat depression. It can take so long. There's so many medicines, so like you're gonna be able to treat it. You're gonna get out of depression definitely, but it just takes so much time. So consider taking a semester off and just working or like going back home if that's an option. I know I wish I had taken a semester off or a year off and been able to actually do my senior year with my full brain and I just expected it to go away. Like I didn't know it was gonna like continue and continue and like not be able to be treated. And so if you are in like severe depression and it's debilitating to where you can't get out of bed, you can't feed yourself, you can't read, like you read and you can't understand, if it's that bad, don't just like go back to school if you're going to fail classes. My parents tried to tell me this and I didn't listen to them at the time. So maybe you guys will listen to me since we're like around the same age. Something else is to tell all of your friends about it. And again, like I said at the very beginning, everyone is on your side. Everyone wants you to succeed. So I made a whole video of how to tell people that you have a mental illness. I'm going to link it right here. Definitely go watch that because it's kind of a touchy subject telling friends. Like a lot of people didn't believe me that I was in depression. Some people did. But the way you tell people will impact so much how they react and make it less horrible. I ended up telling all my best friends that I was in depression and they ended up helping me out a lot. And this is how. So what you need in depression is to be able to work out, to eat, to be on a normal sleep schedule and to go to class. So what I did is I woke up at 7 a.m., not every day, but a lot of times, and I went to the gym with Rose in the morning and we worked out every single day together. And because she was my workout buddy, that was like enough added motivation that allowed me to work out. If this is like normal and this is like you're in severe depression, working out makes it like that. So it's like not like as severe depression, it's still like pretty horrible, but working out, it gives you tiny bits of more energy. Working out is the most important thing most important thing so work out as much as possible and bring your friends into that tell your friends it will help you so much if you can go to the gym together cardio actually grows back your brain from the brain damage that you incur in depression it prevents your depression from getting worse and if you're taking medicine medicine cardio sleep all of that goes together to get you out of depression also eating have as many meals as possible with friends i literally forget to eat when i'm in depression or like i said at the beginning i would walk into the cafe 
not be able to know what to eat and literally leave. So just tell your friends that you want to get lunch together, that you want to eat with them as much as possible. Maybe send out a group text to your best friends. Be like, hey guys, I might be pushing you away because I'm in depression. I'm really sorry. I don't mean to. I need you guys so much right now. Can we study together and eat meals together as much as possible? And just as an example, I'm a major introvert. I like spending time by myself. But when I was in depression, I never wanted to be alone. I always wanted to be around a friend and I would always text my friend Kyle and be like, hey, can I study next to you? I would just like go over to his apartment, we'd study together, we'd go to the library together, we'd go study in the cat together and just, I always had a friend who I was around when I worked out or who I studied with or who I went to church with. So just having your friends near you all the time, just in the same room, I feel like that gave me more energy because I kind of feel people's emotions or feel their vibes. I know not everyone is like this, but I feel like this might help some people. So just being near your friend who is also working, it just gives you that extra motivation. It makes you feel more safe and it will allow you to be more productive. Another thing. So getting out of bed is notoriously horrible when you're in depression. It's extremely difficult. What I found is that I would make a to-do list the night before of everything I needed to get done and make a schedule. You can either write it on your phone, you can create a notebook that has like every day and what you're doing. And if I made a super detailed list of what I needed to do before I went to bed, I would find that in the morning I had more motivation to get up because I had in my mind like what I needed to do. And on your to-do list, you need to put eating food, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and like check that off. Because if you don't do that, you won't eat. A final thing that I think is really helpful is being outside. They've actually proven that just like taking steps, not even cardio, although cardio is the most important, but just like walking outside, being outside, having grass and trees and the sun, and the ocean, if you go to Pepperdine like me, all of that, just nature, it calms your mind down and it helps to lessen your depression a little bit. Because I've heard depression described as a giant stress response in the body. It might not feel like that, but that's how it is. Like your body is tense and it's horrible. <laughs> but just being outside, walking around, going outside to cry, going outside to pray, whatever you need, that's really helpful. The final thing, and I should probably make a whole video on how just to have self-esteem in the midst of depression, but you have to be your own best friend. I remember in my ancient philosophy class when I was in college, we read Aristotle on friendship. And he said that if you're not a good friend to yourself, you're not gonna be a good friend to other people. And ever since that class, when I was 20 years old, I think, I've changed the way I talk to myself. I've been so cognizant about my self-talk, the things I'm saying to myself, thinking about myself, knowing that from that class, and also just Christianity all of growing up, helps me immensely in that, if I woke up at noon, slept through all my morning classes, felt exhausted and finally getting out of bed, haven't showered in three days, you know, something like that. Instead of saying, oh, this is horrible, like you miss everything, like you're a, I don't know, I don't even know negative self-talk things because I've been so into positive self-talk lately. But anyways, instead of tearing myself down, being negative to myself, I would say, oh, it's okay, like you're doing so well, you can go be productive for the rest of the day. Like I would just be so uplifting and encouraging to myself every single day. And this is just a practical thing too. If you sleep through a class, if you don't get an assignment done in time, there's nothing you can do. The past is the past. And so just stop tearing yourself down, being negative to yourself about that. Instead, be super, super encouraging because your brain is in a war zone right now. It's a stress response. Your brain is damaged. It's shrinking. Like there's so much going on. And the last thing you need is for you to be negative to yourself. Anytime that you sleep through a class, sleep through an event, be super encouraging to yourself. Be like, good job, you're doing so well. Like I always am so encouraging about like the little tiny things because in depression, being able to get out of bed, take a shower, have breakfast, put clothes on, that is a mental feat. That is so much effort put into that if you're in severe depression. And so be super encouraging, be super praiseworthy that you were able to do that. You are your own best friend. You're the only person who knows how difficult every single day is. And so be very encouraging. Just talk to yourself in your head all the time. The way I think about it is giving yourself grace and being gentle. So it doesn't matter what anyone thinks of you. It doesn't matter what your professors, 
what your the administrators think of you it matters what you think of yourself what god thinks of you what your inner circle thinks about you that's it don't let other people who don't know your situation define your self-image i love you guys so much i'm excited to read all of your comments and i will see you in my next video bye